So hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Dunn and today I'm walking you around my yard. I've grown all of these trees. In other words, I started planting them in the late 90s. But today we're going to look at a specific tree, this one right here. It's a Washington hawthorn tree. And why am I going to point this one out? Because it's great for bees. And right now in the month of June, it has honeybees all over it. In fact, when you walk around, it sounds like the bees are swarming. And that's because the bees and other pollinators are on these blossoms. And these blossoms will last for almost two weeks, so that's pretty darn good in the early summer, late spring here in the northeastern United States. Just listen to all the bees. But there are other things here on the flowers, and I'll point them out as we go. This one was planted. It was the size of a pencil back in 2000, and I got it from the Arbor Day Society. You used to get 10 trees every time you renewed your membership there. And this is one of those. So just over a foot tall. And here it is today. And you might be wondering, how big will it get? Well, they'll grow 20 to 35 feet in height. If you've got a small area to grow for your pollinators like the honeybees, trees are a fantastic way to go because it's like a vertical garden. And we're going to look at this one up and down. I have several of these, by the way. And we see honeybees on the flowers, and some people think, ah, oh, the honeybees will outcompete our native pollinators. But what I want you to see here is that the bees are sharing these blossoms with a lot of other pollinators, and some that you might not really expect. Now, those are honeybees right there. And, of course, they need the nectar for their energy source, but right there is a firefly lower left aka lightning bug then the little beetle came over the top and you'll see lots of native bees too so if you're teaching kids about nature these are fantastic trees to visit in early june later in the year even wild turkeys fly to these trees to eat the fruit that's produced from this pollination activity and of course the pollen the bees need to produce brood back in their hive look around you might notice the vantage point is up high and that's because my camera is on a pole and I'm sticking it up into the canopy area which is pretty darn dense on this tree now they live over a hundred years in fact I did some basic research and found out that there are some specimens over 400 years old with the oldest specimen being in Washington DC Georgetown so that's interesting. I haven't seen it. Couldn't find any pictures of it, but I can imagine that's one gnarly looking tree if it's over 400 years old. Very interesting. So if you're planning for longevity, these are good trees. Let's see what else we can find looking around on these flowers here. Lots of honeybees for sure. This is a honeybee. You can see the pollen on her hind legs. She'll take that back and put it in the hive and they'll ferment that and turn it into bee bread. This right here is a fly. It's a bee mimic. Look at that. You might think that's a bee, but look, it just has two wings. It's got some bee coloration, which probably helps defend it there. But uh, so even flies, because they're after nectar, they end up pollinating as well. A tiny fly there that's out of focus. Oh, no, that's a native bee. That is a solitary bee. Top left there with pollen on its hind legs. So we're providing for other bee species. There are orchard bees here, mason bees, bumblebees, of course. And you can tell that the nectar is not that heavy because the bees don't spend very much time on the flowers. But when there are several trees like this going around, and a lot of bees attending to them we're getting a pretty good nectar flow and uh, because the bees are ignoring the clover which is in the field around this tree we know that they're showing a preference for the sugar content here in these uh, blossoms on this washington hawthorn tree there's also a legend that uh, paul bunyan because of the thorns on these trees that he used the branches for a back scratcher don't know don't know too much about Paul Bunyan, but that was something I came across. 
There again, worker honeybee. Oh, another fly came and went. Of course, little beetles working their way around, and here's that house fly. Even those come after the nectar, so I guess they're pollinators. Those are the thorns, nice and long there. So, if you like thorny trees, that's the name, Hawthorne, Washington, because it came from Washington, and yes, it's a native tree. So I hope you found this short video about the Washington Hawthorne tree to be beneficial. I hope you get trees that are valuable to pollinators. Thanks for watching.